bruh. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you're coming from. Hope you all are doing well during the best week ever and <laughs> different off the jump. Hey, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. That's wild. Yeah, yeah. And different was like, let's turn it up. Let's go. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Happy best week ever. Uh, we're, you know what? We're not slowing down folks. We're not, so we're, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna keep this best week ever going. We knew that today was at least part of the best week ever, but I got, I got, I got some little, little, little surprises in the mix, a, a little, a little, a little extension, shall we say? Uh, so <laughs> thank you all for being here. Hope you had a really great weekend. What, what a weekend folks. What a weekend. We had our Microsoft sponsored stream. So many uh, good moments during that. So many raffles, so many cool stuff that happened. Gave away a laptop. Then we came back for our Friday with friends and we had Nick. Yo, shout out Nick, exclamation point Nick in chat. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that story. And then just seeing that kind of inspire so many folks or help folks realize that there are so many different ways and paths that move in this journey. And it was just really cool to hear. So if you missed that on Friday with friends, it's, it's going to be Fridays on discord. We had 700 plus people, 700 plus people on a Friday. And the day before the day before we were, we were all hanging out with hello. It's Rufio, the newest member of the stream team, 700 plus people were there too. This community is hands down, hands down. One of the best communities, not only to learn how to code, but on the internet. And we proved it this week, 700 plus people in a, in a Twitch stream, just hanging out, doing some cold wars. Then we had our Microsoft sponsored stream. Then we had 700 plus people on discord to hear Nick talk. Then Saturday we held it down. On our place, we're going to talk about it. We held it down. Sunday, we held it down. Monday, we were back with Rufio. Number one streamer in the category. They were number one streamer in the category. Their past two streams, number one streamer in the category. Let's go. W's all around this week. And then, and then we got today. And today's a special class. It's a little weird. It's a little different. We're going to, we're going to get into it. We're going to talk about it. It's a, little, it's a little different of a class tonight. Uh, we are going to be doing our resume review. And to do this resume review, uh, we were supposed to do it on Monday, but Rufio stream was way better idea. Uh, coming through with the code wars from beginning to getting on GitHub. That was amazing. If you missed it, their VOD is live. And um, what we want to make sure is that I didn't want to do it. <laughs> hey. Ash Bunny, what's going on? Thank you for the raid. Bring in the crew. Woo. 388 folks, that's wild. Yo, if y'all haven't followed Bash Bunny, we, we've done the raid once. If you haven't followed yet, make sure you go ahead and give them a follow. Let me see if I can uh, throw this shout out here in chat. You're missing out on some really good streams. We, we just, so, so Bash Bunny, we just learned about the terminal, right? So we learned about the terminal last class. So now we got, we got a couple thousand folks that need to come by your stream and, and learn and learn how to do it right. We covered the basics. Now they got to come through and do it right. So let's go ahead and uh, let me, let me see if we can throw this in the chat real quick. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to copy and paste it a few times. There we go. You haven't given them a follow yet. Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spam it a little bit here. Make sure you give them a follow. Now that you know what the heck we're doing in the terminal, you gotta swing through and watch their streams. They're, 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 they're slicing and dicing. They're using tools. We, we showed that, 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 that weird thing that happened. We wrote our commit message the wrong way, and we got thrown into that, that weird text editor. They're, they're balling at it. So go, go ball out and watch them when you have the chance. Thanks for raiding. Hope, I hope your stream went well. What were y'all up to today? <laughs> yeah, 
Make sure, make sure you swing through. Thank you for the raid. All right. We're doing our resume review. Resume review is a little bit different. We were supposed to do it on, we were supposed to do it on Monday, but I'm going to delete this as soon as it's over. <laughs> as soon as this, as soon as we're done this stream, I'm going to delete it. So I figured out that if, well, I figured that we shouldn't do it on Monday cause we don't have everyone. But once we're done this tonight, as soon as it's done, gone, donezo, finit, it's gone. Uh, so the idea here is that we are going to be looking at a good resume example that I'm going to ask you all to use a good template. And then we're going to look through some, some folks that signed up to be roasted. And, uh, <laughs> we're going to go a little, we're going to go a little hard. I, I tried my best to, to hide their names and stuff, but we're going to go in a little bit. And so we don't need that staying up there. And the other thing is that, uh, we're, we're the, uh, we're the, the we're the, the victims of our own success. Uh, we have a lot of people that are here. We have so many new folks that join us each stream and those folks might not know the, the ways of the hundred devs, right? They might see a, 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 uh, a, a lovely form on somebody's portfolio site and try to fill it out a hundred times just to see if it works. They, 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 they don't, they don't, they're, they're not the, they're, you know, they're not part of the, the cool kids, you know, they, 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 they they're, they're not kind. <laughs> And so we don't want to leave up uh, the video or the uh, means for these folks to be found elsewhere on the internet. <laughs> so I didn't tweet today. And as soon as we're done, we're going to delete the VOD. And we hope that that will simmer some of the folks uh, from finding us that aren't part of our community. So everyone that's here, everyone that came over for Bash Bunny stream, like we're, we're cool. But there's some riffraff that get mixed into it, and we don't want that to, to be lingering. So we're going to do it, and we're going to delete it. Melody Dev, hey, thank you for the gifted subs. How are your streams been? I haven't seen you. I haven't seen you. Hope they've been doing well, going well. Thank you for the gifted subs. All right. So <laughs> the riffraff. Yeah, exactly, Bash. All right. So. Now we're, now we got that out the way. Let's jump into it. Uh, we got some things to do, some things to talk about before we get to our lovely, lovely resumes. All right. We're going to talk through some stuff about hundred devs. We're going to review some resumes and then your homework. Guess what is to do your resume. Now we will have a full class on how to get ready for the hunt. The hunt is what we call our getting the job process. And so there's so much stuff that goes into the hunt. That's not just the resume, but the cool thing about starting with your resume is a lot of these really important concepts, a lot of these little, like these very important concepts, we can start to simmer on. We can let those, uh, <laughs> Divka, I thought you were telling me to do something else. <laughs> I was like, Leon, you're a little off today. You need to go to, <laughs> I, just, I just got it. Thank you. Uh, we're going to, we're going to see a lot of this stuff in our hunt classes, but the resume brings up some really important topics. Some things about crafting your story, thinking about your past experiences, thinking through the things that you want to highlight as you go into the hunt. So I want to do a very kind of intro to resume and looking at some resumes. And then I need you to do it. And I need you to start thinking through some of these really kind of meaty topics. And we're going to see that in a second, but that's the reason why we're doing a separate class on just the resume. We got 10 resumes. We're going to go through, we'll do a laptop raffle and we'll call it. And you're going to use that extra time tonight that we end early with to actually do your resume. Cool. That'll carry us into the next couple of weeks where we're going to be looking at object oriented programming, uh, going deep into that. And then once we're done object oriented programming, before we shift gears to going into the back end, uh, we will have a class or two on starting the hunt, the job search process, getting all the things we need to start getting together so that we can be effective when it comes time to get a job. Yeah, no check-in tonight because I, I don't want the, as we said, the riffraff coming in from Twitter. We want it just to be us. We want to make sure that we're, we're being kind to the folks that have volunteered themselves as tribute. And so, yeah, no check-in uh, and we'll, we'll keep it, we'll keep it in the family. 
No new friends, exactly. Except for Bash Bunny and the crew. They're cool though. We've been there. We, we we're friends already. Cool. Alrighty. I always like to start off with some questions. I feel like we got through some some big ones already. So we'll do like one or one more question and then we'll get into no APIs. No, we our our API class will be on Thursday. Uh, because we were supposed to do this on Monday, but we switched it up so more people could see it. Question of the day was, were you able to participate in our place? Of course, Orasi, of course. Whoa. Look at these folks that were able to participate. That's wild. I had no idea it was so many. All right. All right, that's cool. I, I, I have some screenshots. For those that weren't able to join us, I got some screenshots for you. We'll get to it. <laughs> All righty. No check-in. We don't want the riffraff coming through Twitter, so no check-in. But if you haven't already, go ahead and show some love on that Microsoft tweet. If you haven't checked in from our last class, they came through, they splashed out. Uh, so please make sure if you haven't already like and retweet that tweet just because they showed out for our community. So let's uh, let's show them some love uh, for folks that won some stuff. We've been giving out stuff all weekend. Uh, you'll start hearing back from me uh, like today and tomorrow. There's just a lot of like little kind of administrative stuff we got to do. So if you didn't hear from me this weekend, that's OK. You're going to hear mainly from me probably tomorrow is when I'll get through the bulk of stuff. I got to get your addresses and all that fun stuff. So we're still kind of we got a lot to get through. I'll get to you and uh, don't don't panic if you didn't get something specifically this weekend. You'll get it by end of day tomorrow. Cool. This is the link. You could also do check in if you missed the Microsoft link. Cool. Remember, folks, health first. We, we decided to go ahead and extend some deadlines so that we could focus in on some of the meteor topics that we have coming up. We have APIs that we're getting deeper into on Thursday. Then we have object-oriented program that we're getting into deeper. And so remember, health first. We're extending some deadlines to give ourselves some breathing room. But please, this is the point in program where you have to be taking care of yourself, doing your stretches, right? Making sure that you are doing some sort of Pomodoro where you're not just roasting your eyeballs on the screen for 10 hours a day, right? Make sure you're taking those breaks. Make sure you're letting your eyes relax. Make sure you're letting your hands relax. Make sure you're doing all the things so you can go the marathon, not just the sprint. Cool. Uh, remember, no networking until May. So all of April, I'm not expecting you to network. Uh, so so you don't you don't have to you don't have to, to hustle the networking right now. Uh, save your brain a little bit. Use that energy to go into the materials. Um, also, don't hound streamers for for coffee chats, please. It's really weird when we go to a, a raid and there's like a bazillion people asking for coffee chats. They don't want to have coffee chats with you. Some of them have been amazingly nice and have opened up coffee chats, but don't keep hounding them in their sh in their chat asking for coffee chats. It, it's 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 not a good look at all. So please, you don't have to network this week, so you don't have to do it. <laughs> Uh, so no networking until May. Um, also, shout out to a lot of the folks in the Twitch community that have done coffee chats. I'm um, thinking of Mel, True. So many folks have opened up their like lives to help us. And so be cool. Be cool. All right. Be cool. Also, show up for your coffee chats. If you can't make a coffee chat, just let them know that you can't make it. Don't ghost people. I'm really convinced, and the reason the reason why uh, the reason why I I didn't tweet tonight, and the reason why I'm going to delete this vod after, is there are a lot of folks that aren't part of 100 devs that are now aware of 100 devs, right? So there are folks that that use and see the hashtag on Twitter that see us at the top of the category on Twitch, and so they might not have been here for the full ride and might not know the the norms, right? And so. Yeah, some folks are ghosting. I have a really strong suspicion that they're not really 100 devs. They're just people seeing that hashtag on Twitter and then using it. So don't be that if you are part of 100 devs. 
right? If, if you if you are part of 100 devs, hold yourself to that, that good old 100 devs caliber. Make sure you're showing up for coffee chats. Make sure you're presenting yourself well so that other folks want to help and support this community. So many folks have seen how wonderful and amazing this community is and want to help and support you all. So live up to that. So many folks opening up their calendars, giving us their time, like be respectful of that just so that more folks do it, right? Cool. <laughs> Especially after we crushed it in our place. Exactly. We, we, we in difference that we were mentioned in three different 20 K plus dreams. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you don't want us to use a hundred devs. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is that live up to that, to that moniker, live up to being a, a good contributor to a hundred devs. If you set, if you set a coffee chat with someone, actually show up to that coffee chat. When we raid folks, be kind, be respectful, show love, right? That's what we do around here. And if we got to, we're happy to get you out because we don't need folks that can't be kind, that can't be respectful. So please set up a coffee chat, do the fucking coffee chat, or at least let them know that you can't make it. And when we raid, be kind, right? Don't hound people for things like that's That's kind of weird. Cool. All right. Now this is, this is like one or two people out of the thousands that are here, but it has to be said. Cool. And if you can't do that, you can't be kind. You can't be respectful. You can't be somebody that doesn't hound Then get the fuck out. We don't need you here. Our client deadline, <laughs> our client deadline was moved to May 3rd. So you have all of April to get extra work done to get that client. Uh, to do all the things that we covered in our getting a client class. So know that you have until May 3rd to sign on the dotted line. You don't have to be finished on that work. You just need that signed contract of $200 or more. Cool. We also talked about for a lot of folks in our community, getting a paid client might not be something they can do due to visa issues or whatever it may be. So we mentioned two other alternatives. You can volunteer for a grassroots org, but you still do the same process, still a proposal, still a contract, still getting payment, which is in the form of them being the best reference you have ever had in your entire life. Uh, you could also contribute to free software. Uh, we posted this first timers only where you can find uh, good, helpful communities that want early career engineers to help and support their project. That would also count for your getting of the client. And we're going to see today why getting one of these three is so important, right? We're going to see why getting one of these three is so important today. It's going to be a big portion of our resume. It's going to be a big thing that helps you get past that <laughs> sniff test. Okay. Uh, we had a newsletter raffle today. We had a newsletter raffle today. So I've already grabbed the folks that filled out the newsletter uh, raffle. <laughs> Remember, it pays to open the newsletter, folks. Today, there was a raffle in the newsletter. I already grabbed all the folks that submitted it before I pressed go live. I clicked press go live. I grabbed the names and I put it. So we had 1,200 people that filled it out before we went live on stream. I forget every time. <laughs> No worries, but I already threw them into a random name picker. We're going to go ahead and do that. 1200 people filled it out before I even went live today, which is wild. I see y'all. Let's going to pick it. Three, two, one. All right. Maze, Sakib Maze. Congratulations. Uh, I will send you a whisper uh, because you are receiving a lovely 100 devs t-shirt. So you have a lovely wonder dev t-shirt coming your way. I will go ahead and send you a whisper. Like I said, I'm going to try and get through the bulk of all those whispers tomorrow. Uh, so coming your way. Cool. Is a lovely, lovely t-shirt. We're gonna have a few more raffles later today, folks. We're gonna have a few more raffles. We're gonna have a, a lovely laptop raffle before we do our raid at the end of the day. So lots of fun that we had still the best week ever. All right, let's talk about our place for a second. I asked you all came. It was a glorious, glorious day, a glorious, glorious weekend. Uh, I had so much fun hanging out with all of y'all over the weekend. Uh, 
it it was it was such a roller coaster of emotions from brokering deals with our germans to the to the to the west to uh holding off mexico from the north to uh brokering peace deals with poland and uh uh so many other wonderful communities rome uh, <laughs> uh who else do we, we broker uh good deals with just so many wonderful communities that came together uh to to build out some really beautiful stuff we made a lot of friends a lot of folks that were not part of our community that were in our discord to like help coordinate chibi girl exactly 100 geck exactly so trolls gg troll exactly so many folks that um we got to meet and hang out with over the weekend uh so many so many factorio exactly so many folks that that heated the call when the streamers were ri ri riding rampant and we were able to build some really cool stuff and it was just really fun to see the community come together to place pixels <laughs> Can we place that we broke an international treaties on our resume? Hell yeah, you can. Oh yeah, I forgot our, our good homies, the Detroit Lions, before they got taken over by H3 and then by Dream. Like, oh, what a, what a weekend. It, you, you had to be there. Uh, it's one of those kind of internet experiences that doesn't come around that often. And so it was super fun hanging out with you all, being in the voice channels. Uh, glad so many folks were able to participate. And we built some really cool stuff. So... The original OG little Leon <laughs> uh, that we had to broker uh, with a the technical school from from Germany. We rebuilt and had our, our lovely little mini Leon. Uh, we had the Goomba uh, that Blah requested. We had this lovely Goomba that got put on our place. If you don't know what our place was, uh, it was a it's a it's a it's an April Fool's thing that Reddit did in 2017. They brought back this year, basically. Anyone with a Reddit account can place a tile, a one color pixel every five minutes. And so you have all these communities that come together to place pixels in five minute intervals. And so we were able to build this first little Leon, then we were able to build the Goomba. We had a Bob at one point and uh, we had the bigger, uh, the bigger Leon that got built until Poland wiped out the WeGo Git, which was, which was a lot of fun. <laughs> So three bobs, exactly. We had so many other little things that popped up too, but these are some of the bigger ones that I was able to grab uh, throughout the weekend. And so it was just a lot of fun uh, to see all y'all organize and build some 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 really cool stuff. Yeah, it's it's a it's an experience I'll remember for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Poland came in and wiped out the We Go Get. They were nice though. They didn't go any further. They could have with their numbers taking the whole thing over. Yeah. And at one point, one of the streamers, I'm not going to mention their name. I've never been so heated over pixels in my life. I was, I was, I was feeling some type of way. <laughs> I was, I was like, I should be having fun. This shouldn't be bothering me. But when you're somebody that's just like trashing the art of like small communities, I was like, nah, this is, I was, I was about to do some stuff that I shouldn't be doing. So I, I took some moments to chill. I was able to relax a little bit, <laughs> but in the end, we had some really cool stuff and it was a really fun time. So thank you to everybody that was able to stop by. Thank you everybody that was able to contribute. Uh, it was perfect timing for the best week ever. It was really a cool collaborative thing that we could do. I really want to figure out other fun stuff for us to do as a community. Now that I can see so many of y'all want to show out, uh, we got to figure out how to do some fun stuff. Maybe some hackathons or cool things coming up soon. All right. Next big thing to announce. Mayan Wolf is officially joining the stream team. Uh, we have another wonderful stream team member. Uh, I know a lot of you have seen Mayan Wolf streams already from Discord. Uh, we rated them after Hello's Rufio's stream. It's official, folks. Mayan Wolf is joining the stream team, and tomorrow will be their first official stream, a part of the 100 Dev stream team. This person shows out so much for our community uh, that it's an absolute privilege to have them on the stream team. Uh, this person is already a SQL developer in their day-to-day -day life. And they're with us to pick up some JavaScript skills, but they're already a developer in their own right. So I love that they can bring some experience to the table. They're an expert at kind of just breaking down some more difficult problems and the things that other folks can understand. They've built some really rad projects on stream. And so 
their first stream as part of the 100 dev stream team will be tomorrow and please please show out show out show up i guarantee you're going to get something out of this stream and i love having so many varied folks on the stream team because <laughs> don't you do it tomahawk uh there's <laughs> tomahawk just said coffee chat jk jk uh so tomorrow 6 30 p.m be there it's gonna be a good time we're gonna have some raffles during that stream as well it's gonna be a good time and um once again like th th it's cool check out these members of the stream team hello rufio was great because uh you get to see their process through a code war you got to get some spaced repetition in when they got stuck you could help answer how they got stuck like it's just like a really cool way to continue your learning and then mind wolf is really good at taking the stuff that we're already learning in class and making it practical like using it to build stuff and so definitely stop by uh, as they build a lovely project tomorrow Alrighty, that's super exciting that's the best news tonight uh, mind wolf is joining the stream team uh you'll see them being able to post in the stream team channel uh and we'll be all hanging out there tomorrow so you're like leon well when i thought today was the last day of the best week ever well it's not thursday will be the last day of the best week ever uh tonight we're gonna do our resume review we're gonna have some fun doing that we got some more raffles we got a laptop giveaway tomorrow is mind wolf stream so that has to be part of the best week ever and so we're gonna end on thursday we're gonna come back we're gonna do our apis we have a lot of other raffles to get through during that that class on apis we have some of the bigger things we still have to give away, like best project, uh, some of the bigger awards that I got some some good surprises for. And then we also have our next merch drop. Some folks said they wanted like a day or two heads up that we were gonna do a merch drop. Merch is not live today. Merch is not live today. Merch will be live during Thursday's stream. So a lot of folks said, hey, Leon, I, I love the idea of merch. I want me some merch, but I need one or two days to get ready. Um, I need to set up my PayPal or whatever it may be. So merch is not today. It'll be on Thursday, which will be the end of the best week ever. But just because the best week ever ends and we're done uh, with what was a monumental week doesn't mean the fun stops. We're gonna have more Friday with friends. We're gonna have more office hours. We're gonna be having Mentor Monday soon where we're gonna help folks that wanna help others uh, come together. So there's lots of other goodies that are gonna keep coming uh, as we wrap up the best week ever. And so thank you everyone so far for an amazing best week ever. Like I said, on the last day of best week ever, I got to do a lot of thank yous. There's so many people that make this community what it is. So that'll be Thursday. We'll have tons of raffles. It'll be a lot of fun, big deal, merch, all the good stuff Thursday as we wrap up the best week ever. But until then, let's talk about some resumes. So tonight we are going to review some resumes. We're going to start off with looking at a template that I, that you can all use. And a lot of folks will try and do other stuff. They won't use the template, just use the template, at least for your first pass. So we'll look at a template. Then we are going to look, um, we're gonna look at 10 different resumes. We'll do the laptop raffle, we'll do a raid, and then we'll end because I want you to work on your resume tonight. I want you to take all the things that we learned this evening together and use some of that energy, some of this time to put it into your resume. You are all doing your networking. You're all getting to the point where you're starting to have a little bit more of a web presence. You're gonna start pushing things to Git and GitHub. You're gonna be in a situation where folks are gonna to wanna to start asking about your professional experience. They're gonna start asking about uh, if you have a resume, if they can pass it along to someone else. So it's important to, um, to figure all that stuff out this evening. Cool. So here is the template uh, for the resume. It is in the slides. And uh, I can also put the link directly in chat. Um, here is the link. I think we actually have exclamation point resume that works. Let me see. I think we actually have a chat command for it. If not, I'll create one right now. All right, hold on, let's copy link address. And I'm gonna add a command, one second.
Boom. Oh, there already exists the command resume. Let's see. Oh, yeah, it's already there. So exclamation point resume is the link for the resume and uh, it should go ahead and get that your way. Let me go ahead and spam it in chat a little bit so folks can get it. Boom, there we go. In case you need the link. You can always look at the slides too and grab it from the slides, but that's the link. It's that bit.ly link there that'll take you to the resume. Cool. Uh, it might go down. <laughs> Google doesn't like it when we send too many people to it. Um, and so it might, it might, it might not load. So don't worry about it right now. Let it chill. When we get our first break, um, it'll, it'll load. I've seen some people saying, woo, I got my copy. Yeah. Whatever reason, when we send so many people to it, it doesn't like it. So just chill for now. Uh, we'll, we'll look at it together here live. And then, uh, you can take your time during the break to grab it. Cool. <laughs> Limited edition resume template. Exactly. So, so many folks say, Hey, Leon, do I need to buy a resume builder? Do I need to buy a resume template? No, use this one myself. And we'll eventually kind of hear from this person a little bit more when we get to our hunt. Uh, we have someone at resilient coders that I, I can only describe as a beast and her name is Stephanie. And Stephanie is the one that helps all of our alumni like lock down their jobs. And so this kind of template is something that, um, I have learned a lot of this resume stuff I have learned from, uh, working with this beast of a person that just really helps all of our students get jobs. And so, yeah, we, we call Stephanie the fairy job mother at RC. And so a lot of what I have learned has come from them and then seeing hundreds of students hundreds of students get jobs right and so a lot of this stuff is not like hey i think this might be cool or like hey this stuff is like i think this is what you be in a resume no this is what i've seen help hundreds of people actually lock down a job across all different types of interviews all types of ranges so um, this is something that i've put some work into but the fairy job mother has done the heavy lifting and um, I'll share their I'll share their stuff maybe after class just so you can give them like a follow on Twitter. Definitely somebody you want to follow because they have some serious skills when it comes to helping folks get jobs. And I'm going to hype them more as we get into our actual class on how to get a job. But I just wanted to throw that out here um, so you don't think it's just all me. Um, this is a lot of hard work from some other folks. But the important thing here is this has worked for a lot of people. And so when it comes time to getting this job stuff, it's not stuff I'm making up. It's not stuff that I'm guessing about. It's literally something I've seen across a thousand plus interviews across hundreds of students that has been distilled into this template. So could you use something else? Yes, feel free to, I don't really care. At the end of the day, this is what I know works. So this is what I'm going to show you. And it's up to you if you're going to give me that trust to try using it, right? So that that's up to you. Um, don't ever let me get in your way of doing the thing you want to do, but this is what I've seen work time and time and time again. And so that's why I'm showing it to you. And that's why I want you to use it. So when you, you come to me and uh, in a couple months, you're like, Leon, my, I'm not getting past that first stage of, of, of interviews. And I asked to see your resume and it's not using my template. I'm going to be like, well, maybe there's something wrong with your resume. Right? So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through why I think this template is good. And then we are going to look at 10 other resumes and point out things where I think they can improve and things where I think that they are doing really, really good on. So that's what we'll do. Alrighty, here is our lovely resume template. First thing, name at the top, we have our, our title of software engineer. Don't shoot yourself in the foot by doing your first version of the resume with anything other than software engineer. Eventually you are going to tailor this resume to every single job that you apply to. Cause remember, we don't just click apply. We network our way into opportunities. And so while we're networking our way into opportunities, we're going to wind up changing our resume. So 
if you are not in a location where the word software engineer is restricted, then you should just put software engineer on your resume. If you're in Canada or someplace where it is restricted, put the closest equivalent uh, to it. Cool. Alrighty. Notice that there is no photo. Please don't put a photo on your resume. Uh, this is like one of the things that a lot of a lot of recruiters I've talked to recently, they literally can't even look at resumes that have photos on them. Like they're not allowed to because they're afraid. <laughs> Are you calling us ugly? No, they're afraid that they might get a lawsuit for discrimination. And so if there is a photo, they will literally, they literally are like told that they can't, they can't accept resumes that have fold photos on them. So get rid of your photo off of your resume, um, just because it, it will cause you trouble with certain recruiters. Yeah. Yeah. And remember, this is a very U S centric resume class. Um, there might be certain things that are, that are standard in your country or location that are not here. So the bulk of our, a bulk of our folks going through hundred devs are in the U S. Uh, and so that's why there are some things that this is, this, this is just very U S centric. If you're in an, in an area where they, you have to have photos, then ignore that advice. Yeah. Cool. Summary room. The summary is, is quick, short and to the point but is often one of the very few things that'll be actually uh, read. Remember, does anyone know how long a recruiter typically spends on a resume? How long do you think a, a recruiter spends on your resume? I'm seeing 40 seconds, 30 seconds, six seconds. Six seconds six six seconds six seconds so you got to get all the stuff out of their view that is going to in those six seconds not enable you to pass the sniff test and so you want bangers only and you want to make sure that it's clear concise and not something that's gonna take up their time. I see a lot of folks that will put a lot in their summary. Don't, very quick to the point. Here's a summary in, in ours. Creative, detail-oriented software engineer with a deep interest in AI. Proven track record of creating and implementing successful front and back-end web applications, looking to bring skill, my skills to a tech company with global reach. So let's break down why this is like a thing. I'm saying with a deep interest in AI, do, do am I claiming that I am a, a, a machine learning expert or an artificial intelligence expert? No, but I'm hitting those keywords though. That's for sure. I'm hitting those keywords right now. AI is hot. It's a good keyword. It makes me sound smart. I don't know how to know how to do machine learning or AI. Makes me sound like I know what the fuck I'm talking about, right? If, I, if I'm if i interested in AI, maybe I can handle your web app, right? And so somebody saying resume SEO, yeah, it's a thing. All of your resumes are gonna be passed through uh, a, a, a computer, right? It's gonna, be, uh, it's gonna be passed through a computer. We have this lovely CV compiler where you can try it. Uh, I highly recommend once you've done your first pass on your resume, that you pass it through the CV compiler. See what recruiters see when it's passed through a machine. And so there are, there is a thing as, uh, <laughs> right? There, there really is a, a machine that is reading some of your resumes and you wanna have some, some things on there that are gonna help boost it in, that, in that, that metric. And so AI is one of those things. And so I like throwing that on here, deep interest in AI. Because when people think about this, right? So there's two things that could be happening here. One, you could be going through a machine, in which point you just got points. Or more risk, realistically, a recruiter is looking at this, right? A recruiter is looking at this and going, oh, this is somebody that's like into computer science. This is somebody that is probably a good engineer, right? If they're dabbling with AI, they're probably a good engineer. And so the idea here is that you're, you're doing two things. You're trying to trick, trick a robot 
and you're trying to trick a recruiter, <laughs> you're trying to get them got in the six seconds that they're going to spend on your resume. Right. And so a recruiter sees that and immediately they're thinking, all right, better, better person, better candidate. Then you say that you built successful front end and back end web applications. That probably is the jobs that you're going to be applying for. Right. Probably the jobs you're going to be applying for. So you check that box and then looking to bring my skills to a company with global reach. And so this is kind of generic. Some folks might tweak global reach. But the idea is that you're just trying to like you like the reason why you're applying, the reason why you're showing up is because you want to work at a bigger company. That's it. That's all you're doing here. You're saying, hey, I want to I want to I want to show up. At, I want to work at, a, at a, a slightly bigger company because that's going to be part of your story. When you talk to recruiters, when you talk to the kind of the front line of joining these companies, so much so about you getting the actual interview is about the story as to why you have shown up today. The story as to why you have decided to apply to this job. And one of the common things people are going to say, ask you is why have you left your previous opportunity? And your response is going to be, well, I want to focus on a product organization or I want to work at a slightly larger company, right? That's one of the very clear outs. A lot of you are going to have simply freelancing on your, on your resume. And so if you just have freelancing on your resume, one of the stories is, Hey, I'm tired of this freelancing grind, getting clients, making clients happy. I want to join a product that people around the world use. I'm, I'm sick and tired of freelancing, of doing that freelancing grind. I want to join a company that supports a product that folks around the world use. Right. And so. This idea of the summary is the very first part of crafting your story. And you really need to think through, right? You really need to think through what is a plausible story. You shouldn't be throwing things out there like I'm unemployed. You shouldn't be throwing things out there like I'm unhappy at my current job. You shouldn't be throwing out things that are negative in any way, shape or, shape or form. You need to have a logical reason why you're showing up today that makes the person want to hire you, right? That makes, the, I need more money. No, that's not a good reason, right? You need to give them a, a reason why you're showing up. I want to join, I'm, I'm tired of the freelancing grind. I want to join a company that has a, an actual product that I can grow in, I can go deep on. I don't want to have to get a new client every three months. Like I, I'm ready to join a product team that, that has great customers and, and treats them very well, right? Like there are so many things that you have to do that you have to think through. So one of the very first things you need to think through as you're thinking through your resume is also thinking through like your story and how does that story fit into the summary so that people know why you're showing up, why you're interested. And always, 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 when you're working on a resume or you're working on any of this professional stuff, Always think about it from the person across the table from you. A lot of folks snitch on themselves. A lot of folks talk about themselves and not the best light. This is the one time in your life where you're allowed to ball out. Don't be humble. Talk your talk. Show the walk that you've walked. So do it. Take that opportunity, right? No room for, for humble pie. No room for not showing the highlight reel. You got to show out nothing negative, no junior crap, no anything. You got to, you got to, you got to make sure that the person across the table that's reading the resume in those six seconds go, oh, this person's probably an engineer. Has no highlight reel nonsense. If you're doing a hundred devs, you have an amazing highlight reel already. And that highlight reel is going to continue to grow as you go through the program. Get that I hate that. That's like one of the, like, I, I hate very thing, very few things in life. And the thing I hate most, get spicy real quick, is people say I'm a horrible, like, like not me personally, but they talk about themselves and they say, I don't have a highlight reel. And then they say, I'm a terrible liar. Because when you say that you're a terrible liar, what you are saying is that there's nothing good about yourself that you can put on a resume. Fuck that. If you've gone through this program so far, you have amazing stuff that you can put on your resume. You have a highlights reel and that highlight reel is only going to grow. 
So get that talk out of your head, get those words out of your mouth. They have no place going forward. If you're going through this program, you will have a phenomenal highlights reel that will enable you to stand out against candidates like a hundred plus other folks have done. Right. And so none of this, I, I, none of this, I don't know what to put on here. No, we're, you're going to get there. We're going to get there together, but get that self doubt, that self loathing out your mouth. that has no place, no place today or for the rest of your life. Because if you're still here, you've done something that thousands, probably millions of other people have not done. I was looking at, so I, I think I mentioned this during stream once before, but I was looking at um, CS50. CS50 is, is hands down the, one of the best, it is the best computer science course on the internet. And they actually published their numbers, like the folks that have gone through the program, right? And made it to the end. And so CS50 started with 150,000, 150,000 signups, over 100,000 people engaged, meaning like they came to like the first class or so. Out of those 100,000, 1% completed the course. To me, what is hands down one of the best courses ever made on the internet. I actually think it was like slightly less than 1%, less than 1% completed the course. So if you are still fucking showing up, all 3000 of us, you're doing something that thousands, hundreds of thousands of people have not been able to do. So we got to get this talk out of our brains. I don't know how to, I don't know how to pump you up, but over the next few weeks, you got to get that out of your brain. You have amazing stuff that you've already built. You have amazing things that you've already learned and you can craft a resume that highlights those things. And as we continue the program, you're going to have stuff that nobody else in the game has that are coming out of other boot camps, that are coming out of four year degree programs. You're going to, you're going to dance circles around them. You're going to, 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 to just absolutely obliterate them. And so, we need to end this like now. So that's all I, I said my piece. You're probably going to hear me do it again when we get to our like our 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 um our actual hunt class. But when we're doing this resume, you all will have stuff you can put on here. No more of that. Jason Derulo, thank you so much for the uh, five gifted subs. Hope you're doing well. Jason Derulo, do you want to come on the, on our Friday with friends? I think people really need to hear your story. Hit me up. All right, let's keep going. Anyone here could say something along this line. Creative, you are, you've all built stuff. Detail oriented, you managed to keep showing up. That's true. Software engineer, you write code. That's true. With a deep interest in AI, switch it out to whatever you have an interest in. If you don't like AI, say VR. If you don't like VR, say something, something else, right? But the idea here is that we're doing the things that help us stand out. Proven track record in creating and implementing successful front end and back end web applications. Hell yeah. You've built front end applications already. You'll get to the back end very soon. Uh, if you've used an API, then you've also built back end applications. Cool. Looking to bring my skills to a tech company with global reach. You can absolutely say that beautiful. So we have our summary that will help pass the sniff test. And then you're going to notice we have some other stuff over here. We have our contact. We have our email, our portfolio, our GitHub, our LinkedIn, and our Twitter, if you're not wildin'. I think everybody here has a, a, a professional Twitter or you should at least have one. Um, and it's up to you if you wanna put that on your resume or not, but it's on there. Um, notice very distinctly, I've not put a location. Um, notice I did not put a location. And that's, that's, that's on purpose. Um, some companies dismiss your application based solely on the location that you put. Uh, and if they, if they need to know where you are, they'll ask, but you don't need to snitch on yourself before you even get in the door. So I didn't, um, put anything. Yeah. You won't see a location on a good resume. Cool. Work experience. You're going to notice the very first thing about work experience is your engineering work at a hundred devs so you were a software engineer at 100 devs that is true you were all at 100 devs uh you were all software engineers at 100 devs by the time you're in the hunt 
um, we will kind of slowly start, we'll slowly stop talking about 100 devs as a bootcamp and we will shift gears talking about 100 devs as an agency. Uh, 100 devs is a real agency. We have clients and we will continue to get clients. And so you are all software engineers at 100 devs. And so while you're at 100 devs, you will have collaborated with a team of developers to build modern and responsive web application using best practices. You've already done this. If you've come to our project nights, you have already collaborated with a team of developers to build modern and responsive web applications. Like that's, that's something that you've already done. You've built semantically structured full stack web applications. You have already done this. If you've came to project night, you've already done this. Applied agile methodologies like Scrum for project management. You didn't know you were doing it, but there are some portions of it that you've already done. And as we get to the end of program, you will all have worked on a project team together. So by the time you graduate 100 devs, you will have your 100 hours project. You have worked on multiple projects and teams. So all of this stuff you will have underneath your belts. Now you're gonna notice, we're gonna talk about recent projects. What you're gonna notice about the way that we talk about our projects is that you should never talk about your projects. Um, don't you need a cert, a cert for Scrum? No, you don't. I mean, you can get certified in Scrum, but you don't need a certification to like use Scrum methodology. All Scrum is, is like how you work with other developers. Cool. Now, <laughs> you're gonna notice we're gonna talk about our projects as though they are real clients, right? And so the, the clients, we will, whenever you build a project from this point forward, Never build a project that looks like it could be a bootcamp. Always build your projects with a client in mind. Even if there is not a client, build a project with a client in mind, right? And so Hip Coffee Co. could be a project I did during a bootcamp, or it could have been a project I actually did for a client called Hip Coffee Co., right? And so the idea here is you just wanna be careful about how you talk about stuff. If a recruiter is only spending six seconds, you don't have to snitch on yourself and make it seem like you were in a boot camp. If they ask, you don't have to lie and say, yeah, it was an agency with a training program and I went through the training program, right? But you don't have to snitch on yourself out the gate and say that. Let them dream the software engineer of their dreams. And when they ask, clarify, but you don't have to come out the gate snitching on yourself. So always label your projects as though they are real companies. Talk about them as though they were real clients. Cashier can take coffee orders from customers with their names. Baristas can log into the app and see orders that have been made. Mark them as complete. Orders that have been completed will note which barista completed the order. All of you that graduate from this program will have built this app as part of a team. So when you graduate, you will literally have this in your recent projects. Happy notes. Users can log into their profile and find their list of notes. They can add new notes through an input, which they can edit or delete all the notes in their profile. By the time we get done our back end, you will all have this project in your portfolio, right? And so you might not name it Happy Notes, you might not name it Hip Coffee Co, but the idea is that you're gonna have serious projects that you've worked in teams with that are live, that people can play with, and you're gonna talk that talk so that folks See them as real projects because that's what they are. And then everyone's going to have a hundred hours project. You're not going to call it a hundred hours project, right? You're not going to call it a hundred. You're not going to call it the hundred hours project, but it's going to be a project that you sink a hundred hours into. Half of the folks that got jobs last cohort did not have technical interviews because they did this stuff well. Somebody looked at their resume, looked at their portfolio, looked at their LinkedIn and go, huh, there's no way in hell that this person is not an engineer. Brought them into the interview, talked through their 100 hours project, asked them a bunch of technical questions. We have a bank of over 300 questions that you will all memorize, right? And they're able to talk through that project and people go, oh, you built this from scratch. Like you, 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 can, you know everything that happened in this application. You have all these other apps. You, you have real people that you've worked with. Like good enough, boom, you get the job. All right? And so you don't have it yet, but start thinking about what's your 100 hours project gonna be? 
Is it something that you're excited to build? Something that you, as Divker likes to say, it can be something you're excited about or something that you're, that you hate <laughs> and you want to fix it. And so, uh, we're, we'll, like I said, this is not our first class in the hunt. It's just things that need to start thinking through, um, in terms of your resume, but also like get the gears turned into so that when we do get to the hunt, you've already thought through some of this stuff. And then we list other projects. Here's where a lot of people kind of, um, snitch on themselves, right? This is where people kind of snitch on themselves. And the reason why they snitch on themselves is because they list like their other projects, right? They list their other projects. Uh, will catch up crew have these group projects? Uh, yeah, like I said, we, we have most of our group nights will be during class time, but we'll hold other times where folks can work in groups as well. But you can also create a thread and organize and catch up crew as well. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, you said it more times than I have now, nah, but it, you always got to give credit where credit's due because it's amazing. All right. So here's where most people snitch on themselves. Like all of their like little apps they build, it just, it just sounds like they were in a boot camp. And so instead of saying virtual, instead of saying slot machine app, you say small licks casino virtual slot machine. Uh, hold on. Let me clarify real quick. Some folks will put slot machine app on their resume and some people will put small lakes casino virtual slot machine so tuck nato said so lie no what was a lie there what was a the lie there tell me what was the lie that's what i want to call it did poker stars lie when they called their casino poker stars did the WPT lie when they said WPT poker app? No, that's the name of their app. So why can't ours be Small Lakes Casino Virtual Slot Machine? Get the fuck out of here. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. People brand their projects all the time. So brand your project. Maybe make a landing page for it. Right? Come on now. Get out of here. Don't actually leave. I, I want you to stay. I just I want that idea to get out of here. <laughs> don't just name like just don't put a project on there. N name your projects. Every other business in the world names their projects. Name your projects. Cool. Los Angeles Stargazer Society APOD web app with NASA API integration. I'm in Los Angeles. I'm a stargazer. Maybe I want it to be a society and I'm going to build a NASA app. Uh, guess what we're doing on Thursday, folks? Guess, <laughs> guess what we're doing on Thursday? We're building a, an API that uses NASA's API. So don't just say NASA API website. Give it a freaking name. Right? Everyone here has built the next app. On-demand background color changer for partner Twitch streamer. On-demand background color changer for partner Twitch streamer. Guess what? I'm a partner Twitch streamer, thanks to y'all. And you all built me a color picker. It's the first thing we did in JavaScript. So you could have said color picker. Like some of these pe people, people will be like, Leon, I applied to 500 places and I look at their resume and it says color picker. Bruh, what's a color picker? Why would any, why would any professional software engineer put a color picker on their resume? Why? They never, you got to think about it from the perspective of a recruiter. No software engineer worth their salt would put a color picker on their resume. Now, if you built an on-demand background color changer for a partner Twitch streamer, that's a little different. It's true. You did. You built it for me. So at this point, when you're working on your resume, think about how the other person is going to perceive it. I am always happy to let a recruiter, uh, an engineering manager, somebody that's going to be looking at this stuff, run off and paint the best picture they could ever paint of me in their head. I'm not lying. All this stuff is true. I've done the work to brand myself, right? I've done the work to brand my projects. You can't fault me for doing that. But if you want to paint a better picture of me because of it, I'm going to let you. 
If you ask me directly, sure, I'll explain what all these things were. But guess what? It never fucking happens. Nobody ever, maybe one out of a hundred interviews, do they dig deep and actually want to know the nitty gritty details because they're spending six seconds, six seconds. So if they're spending six seconds, they're not going to nitpick all this stuff. They're going to read it, go, this person is a software engineer. You move to the next round. And the folks that don't do this, the folks that get uncomfortable with this part, like, oh, Leon, I can't, oh, I can't brand my stuff. Oh, I can't do it. Guess what? You're not going to get a job. Or it's going to take you way longer than it would have. All right. So start thinking, start thinking through these things, right? <laughs> Keeping it real. Huh? I am. I get spicy on this because this is the number one thing people fuck up. This is like the biggest thing people fuck up and it's the biggest thing. You know what it is? And it's not, it's not that, and we're going to take our break soon. Don't worry. And it's not that they're fucking up. It's that they don't have enough belief in themselves to talk highly about themselves. They don't have enough belief in themselves to brand their projects. They don't have enough belief in themselves to build their brand. Right. And so that's the sad thing. That's why I get so upset about this is why I get so, why I get so spicy with it is because it's not that these people feel this. It's not that these people don't want to do certain things is that a lot of times with a lot of my students, there's something in them. There's something in their brain that says, I can't do this. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. I, I, I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be a software engineer. I shouldn't be applying and you have to squash it out. It's not true. If you're still here, you're doing something that hundreds of thousands of other people weren't able to do. You're building amazing things. You've already built amazing things. You have a story that's worth sharing. You have experience that's worth putting on your resume and you, 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 you deserve for someone to see you in your light that you already shine so amazingly with. Right. And so when it comes time to putting it on paper, for some reason we slip. And I've, I've done this in the past myself too. We slip when it comes time to putting it down on paper. And so make sure that you take some time. And if nobody else tells it, tells you, listen to me, if you're still here, you're amazing. You've done something that hundreds of thousands of other people have not been able to do. Talk your talk, put yourself in the best light possible because you're worth it and you deserve it. All right, we need to do a break. When we come back from the break, we got two or more big things we got to cover got in terms Don't of the, the, like the last part of the resume. And then we're going to look at 10 resumes and go over it together. We'll do uh, some wonderful raffles. We still have the laptop at the end of the day. Uh, so let's go ahead and do our, our five minute timer. But I think somebody actually already born code. Thank you for the hydration. Cheers to you. And Almost show 12, added two minutes to the timer. Uh, so this is gonna be a seven minute break, folks. Seven minutes on the timer. Take that break. Uh, maybe try and pull up the resume template if you haven't been able to do it. And then when we come back from our seven minutes, we're gonna look at the last bit of this resume and we're gonna see some real examples. I'm really excited. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll do our raffle afterwards. See you all in seven minutes. I'll be sure to run the ads so that folks actually take a break. If you're new around here and you don't know what we mean by break, please, we're in a marathon, not a sprint. If you're able, get up, move around, hydrate, let your eyes relax on things, not the screen. Uh, we'll be back together in seven minutes. <laughs> I see you're indifferent. That's hilarious. All right, I gotta run these ads. Exactly. As Melody said, make sure you stretch, drink your water, please. I'm right, gonna run the ads. I'll see you all very shortly.
You don't have to give everyone who graduates one dollar. Uh, so <laughs> we actually thought about doing that last cohort. <laughs> That's why we asked you to get a client though. But uh, we actually we actually considered that idea, which I thought was pretty funny. All right, folks, come on back. Come on back. All righty. <laughs> well, no, it's, it's just so that uh, you can say that you're a paid software engineer. But if you, you, you already, most of you will be paid software engineers, which is pretty funny. Alrighty. Come on back. Come on back. Well, let's go ahead and uh, come back to a raffle. Let's come back to a raffle. So let me go ahead and set that up. One second. One second. One second. Alrighty. Ooh, that they're like crinkly in the music right now that ugh. all right giveaway is open go ahead exclamation point raffle get in here exclamation point raffle to get in here and then we're going to finish up looking at this resume and then look at some examples i missed like a raid or something how many people here most of me people. All righty. Do another 10, 15 seconds, 15 seconds. We don't get. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close it out. And we're going to pick our winner. <laughs> it's rigged. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Congrats, blah, on the raffle. <laughs> Congratulations. I got to do another one. I can't do that. <laughs> Blah, you're going to get your, you're, you're already getting your mod hoodie, but you'll also get your t-shirt. <laughs> you'll get your official t-shirt as well. <laughs> but I, I feel people would, would say that that's rigged if we let that stand. So we got to do another one. <laughs> All right. So that's complete. And let me go ahead. I'm going to do another one here. Gonna keep this open for 30 seconds. Exclamation point raffle if you want to get in here, folks. This is for another 100 devs t-shirt. 100 devs t-shirt. That's hilarious. Well, the funny thing is that happened to me too. Um, that happened on Rufio's stream. I think it was Ruf yeah, was it Rufio's stream or? might have been i forget i think it was a few stream where they they ran the raffle and i entered it just to run it <laughs> and i won <laughs> that was funny it's all rigged all righty gonna close this one up let me know and and we're gonna go ahead and pick a winner Tony G three, two, three, eight, eight. Congrats. Uh, you'll be getting messages from me tomorrow, ending up how to get you these lovely t-shirts. So Tony G thirty two, three, eight, eight. Congratulations. You want to know how I know some of y'all come back a little after the timer's done. Some of y'all came back a little, a little, a little after the timer. Cause there were more, <laughs> there are more raffles on the second one entries than they were on the first one. <laughs> <laughs> I think people just took their time. They saw a seven minute timer that turned into 10. 
Alrighty, congrats, Tony G. We complete that right down here. Beautiful. Alrighty, folks. Let's go ahead and finish looking at our resume template here. Let me chill the music and uh, <laughs> get into it. All right, so we talked about our first work experience being software engineer at 100 devs. We have our projects. We've named all of our smaller projects. There's not as much as a boot camp smell. And then you're going to have at least two other positions at least two other positions on your resume. Most resumes could be fine with just three. If you have a really established work history, that's fine. I've had lots of folks with really established work histories and they still keep it to three. <laughs> uh, it's up to you if you wanna do more, but three is enough, okay? Because they're only spending six seconds. Now, sometimes they might wanna ask questions. They'll follow up if they have more questions. But sticking to these three is often really helpful and it's even more helpful if um, you don't have a, an extensive work history, right? And so, if, or if you have a, a work history that um, might, might have had a gap, these three are helpful, okay? So the next one will be your consulting. So your consulting started when you first started learning or thinking about learning to code. So if you ever thought about learning to code, that's typically when you start your consulting time. Uh, if you have a big gap in your resume, that was your consulting time. And as long as you get one client, then you can you can put as big as a consulting time as you need on there. Some folks feel like they, they have bigger gaps, but if you wrote some HTML 10 years ago, then you could literally have been freelancing that whole time because your first code was written 10 years ago. That's uh, that's a little, I mean, that, 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 that's kind of how you can do it. If you have a bigger gap, this is, this is how you fill that gap. And so if you have a gap on your resume, right? If you're worried about that gap, this is how you fix that gap. You are freelancing. And as long as you have one actual client that people can actually talk to that would like pick up the phone and say, yeah, I worked with this person, then you can, you, you don't, you don't have to worry about any gaps anymore. You just don't, right? And people right now are the most willing to forgive gaps that have ever than any other point in time. I've been teaching the code for about 10 years. I've been helping people get jobs for like five. This is the best time ever to have a gap on your resume because everyone's like, yeah, there was a global pandemic. You probably have a gap or two, that's okay. And so you can explain the gaps as like, hey, I was freelancing, especially during the pandemic and totally, Totally fine. This is like the best time ever in the history of ever to have those gaps because you had a global pandemic and you are freelancing. So if you have a gap, it's really important that you get a actual client that you can put on here, that you can describe what you did for that client in detail and that somebody would actually pick up a phone. People say, hey, Leon, what about references? This is where your references start. That's why getting a client is so important to this process. It's someone that will actually pick up the phone. Cool. Um, how you describe your consulting is up to you, but I like created full stack web applications and static websites for different clients across small and medium sized businesses. Also consulted on SEO and social media strategy. Some clients include, and then you would list your actual clients that you got. Cool. Now, the last one is any of your previous kind of jobs. Uh, raise, we're going to talk about that in a second. We're going to talk about education in a second. Um, the last thing could be anything that you did. It really doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, you can put any of your past jobs on here. It, it doesn't really kind of matter, um, what you did. And so you can put, you were, did you, did you ever like, did you, did you work at a coffee company? Right. You worked at a coffee company and you like manage their, like their Twitter profile, then you could be a marketing associate at that coffee company, right? Um, one thing I don't recommend doing is like really changing your title. Um, if that, like if you had a specific title, right? In, in some more serious background checks, those titles can be confirmed. 
that's something to, to understand. So what some folks might do is they might put their actual title and then maybe like in parentheses, some of the things they did at that, at that location, right? So if you, let's say worked as a barista, you could put that in like parentheses. Uh, so that shows like your actual titles there, but the thing that you, that you did that you were excited about at that, at that company, right? So maybe you manage their social media profile. And while you're there, you establish a strategy and communications campaign that did X, Y, and Z. So whatever the highlight was, right? At that organization, you put that here and everyone, I don't care what you did. I don't care if you were a, a fortune 100 CEO. I don't care if you were uh, a, an animal wrangler in the Sahara. I don't care if you were a barista. It doesn't matter. You all have at least one banger that you can think of that you did at that company or a way to think about it um, that can communicate what you did there. Right. And maybe tilt it towards what you're interested in doing now. And this might be the hardest thing for folks to think through. Um, a, a lot of folks that I, I would say most of my students have done pretty traditional jobs. A lot of my students have been baristas, they've been uh, cooks, they've been um, things. And there's, there's always something, you, some way that you can massage that role into something that you did positive and then something that might lean into what you did, uh, why, why you're a software engineer. And for a lot of folks, this is where your story becomes really important. So let's say you were a server at a restaurant, like you're a waiter, waitress at a restaurant. You would talk about your time at that restaurant as having a horrible time with the point of sale system, like where you typed in those, in those, in those orders every day, you had to type in orders. You hated it. You thought that you could do, you could make a better point of sale system. So you learned how to code. And one of your big projects that you've worked on is a point of sale system that you're trying to sell to small to medium sized restaurants. So you went from a waiter, waitress, having a horrible experience with the point of sale system, learning how to code to your hundred hours project being a new point of sale system that you're actually going to try and sell. You don't actually have to try and sell it. You just say you're going to try and sell it to small, medium businesses. That gives you a plausible story as to why you're showing up as a software engineer, right? And so we're going to have classes on this crafting your story here. We're going to have classes on how to frame anything that you've done in the past in a positive light, but you need to start thinking about it right? You need to start thinking about it now. How can I take what I did in the past and mold it into a story as to how I got to where I am now? All right. And so you don't have to have that right now. Something I need you to start chewing on and something that we'll have a whole class on. But this last, this third thing could be anything. I don't care what your past job was. There's a way to, to make it so that it helps you with this new role. Cool. Maybe running, maybe we can do that. All right. So like I said, we're gonna have a full class on how to do that, like crafting story. That's something I need you to start thinking about right now. Cool. All right, the last thing I recommend having on your resume is volunteering. Uh, I think the easiest thing to volunteer for are conferences. Uh, and so just have one, one thing here that's like a volunteer experience. Uh, so that could be, uh, I volunteer at a certain conference every year, the free software foundation conference, uh, every year that it was in person, I volunteered for the past couple of years. Um, and they also helped with like their mailing campaigns, right? And so find something that's in the realm of, uh, either like a technical conference or a local organization that you feel like you want to contribute to. That can be something that you can talk about, uh, during your interview as well. Right. So, um, there's like the, the, like the charitable reason to do it, but there's also like the greedy reason to do it. Having the, the volunteer experience gives you just one more thing to talk about uh, during the interview. Uh, no, no non-code volunteering is great, but you want something that is actually technical related. Something that somebody else will be looking at your resume and go, oh, they also do Code for America. I do Code for America every, every Tuesday, right? They're, like there are a lot of these like volunteering things that like people that are in tech are on the in on, right? And so it's just something that like helps you find a common bond with the interviewer um, and helps separate your resume from any other resume that doesn't have it.
especially if you're local, right? Especially if you're local. Uh, and like I said, this is just kind of like the first pass. We're gonna have a whole deeper class on like resume and how to structure your job. So there are like a lot of specific questions about it. Feel free to ask them, but we're gonna have other classes on resumes too. Uh, what about like le like if you were a managerial beforehand and now you're applying? Uh, we've had students that have gotten senior roles right out of 100 devs, uh, quite a few. Uh, a lot of times the like level that you go into doesn't like don't 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 limit yourself. Uh, if you want to go straight to managing, you probably could if you did this process right, which I know sounds absolutely wild, but I actually do believe it. Um, and so this part of this process is like crafting that story. And if you've done managerial things in the past, you have to bake that into your story and use that as a huge value add to the company that you're joining. Cool. The last things we have on here are skills. Uh, remember we talked about like the computer reading your your resume and so you want these skills here so that if a computer is reading your resume they like pass you on to the next the next round cool so we have our skills html css javascript react react native node mongodb postgres op web accessibility um, these are things that are pretty standard you might swap in and out certain things on here um, but that's about it uh, the last part here is education and I don't recommend putting education first unless you went to like a really strong school. Uh, if you went to like an Ivy League school or something like that or a top tier recognizable school, then you might move um, up your like your education to be somewhere different. Um, but if you kind of went to like a normal university, normal school, um, you kind of put your education to the right hand side. And can anybody tell me about tell me about what I've done specifically here? Anybody figure out what I've done here? No degree. This person doesn't have a degree. Um, but if somebody was spending the six seconds that they are going to spend on this resume, would they know that they did not have a degree? Nah. They just would they would just see UMass Boston and keep moving, right? They, they, unless they were specifically trying to weed out for that question, they're just going to go boop and move on to the next thing. And so that's what I recommend you do. If you did not have a degree, but you went to school somewhere for a little while, you can put that on there, put the years that you were there, uh, and then keep it moving. If you do have a degree, you can put your full degree there. Uh, if you have any, like a, a, like a master's, you can put your master's there. Uh, some folks that might have like military experience, you can put it like near this area as well. Um, you don't have to put GPA. You don't have to put any of that crap on there. Um, you don't have to do, you don't have to put anything on there that you don't feel comfortable with. Remember, this is all about passing a sniff test. If somebody really cares about certain things, there's nothing that you can do that'll stop them from caring about those things. But what you can do is make it a little bit harder for them to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> right if they really want to care about care about it and they really want to dig they will they'll ask you follow-up questions but you don't have to come out the gate snitching on yourself you don't have to come out the gate like immediately dismissing your resume and so when you see these folks that say i i applied to 500 places and i didn't get the job it's because they have stuff on their resume that the recruiter is seeing in those six seconds and deciding to not to not move their resume to the next round but like I said, I'm going to show you how to play the game. It's up to you if you want to play it. I went to a culinary school and I have a culinary arts degree. What should I put? You should put that on your resume. Oh, yeah. A lot of companies care about degrees. A lot of them don't. And even some of the ones that do say they care, they don't check. So it just doesn't, it doesn't behoove you to, to, to shout that somewhere in your resume. What if you have no education past high school? You can leave education off of your 
uh, resume. You just like not have it. If you if you really don't feel like you want to put anything for education, just don't put it. Uh, some folks will put certifications on here. Uh, I'm not a big fan of certifications unless they're like the meaty certification. So if you said, Leon, I, I don't have any education past high school. What, you're one of the people I might push to do like a specific cert that might have some meat behind it, like an AWS cert or something like that, just to have something in that space. But that's not something I would do now. For now, I would just leave it off. As you get through the end of program, that's something you might look into. Um, but as a general rule of thumb, I don't put certifications on resumes um, unless they're like the really big heavy hitter ones that like you had to take the test and it took a long time to study for, yeah. Uh, what about jobs that ask you to have a BS? Uh, if you've networked your way into those jobs, it, it sometimes just doesn't matter. How relevant are spoken languages and where would you put them? Um, you can put them in that like kind of the skills area is where you can put languages if you want. Um, and different ghost says, I didn't complete high school. No one has ever asked me about my education or even the BS requirements. So there you go. One of the strongest engineers that, that I know that have helped all of our folks here at 100 devs that have amazing jobs. There you go. Yeah, so you can put you can put um you can put languages here if you want. What about soft skills? Leave them off your resume. Notice that I don't have like Microsoft Word or like public speaking, right? These are things that everyone has. They're not value adds on a resume. They don't you don't need to put that you know how to work a computer um on your resume. Like that that's okay. Like that's assumed you're a software engineer, it's slightly a little bit higher bar there in terms of like your technical skills. Excel stuff like that doesn't belong on a on a engineering um, resume. Leave off Udemy Coursera certs. Yeah, don't put them on there. That just that, what is what is what is what is someone seeing a Udemy cert smell like? Think about that. If you had if you actually if you absolutely crushed the resume, and then I saw a Udemy cert, I'm just gonna think, oh, you haven't been coding for that long. Wait a minute, I thought you were I thought you had worked here here here. I thought you've been freelancing. Why do you have, like, why do you have like this, this Udemy cert, right? Like that, that you got to think about it. Folks don't want to hire new folks. Like they, they just don't, they don't want to hire folks that are early in their career. They don't want to hire engineers straight out of boot camps. Like whether, whether you can do the job or not, some folks have already made up their minds about this stuff, right? Some folks have already made up their minds about this stuff. And so don't give them that ammunition. Just don't let them dream what they want to dream, get into the position where you're talking to the engineers and then all that stuff can come out later, but you don't have to put it on here where somebody's literally spending six seconds to decide if you go to the next round. Cool. Always think about it. Think about what do you want somebody to see in these first six seconds? They can always clarify. They can always ask more questions. But in those six seconds, what do you want them to see so that they can go, oh, this person's a software engineer. I want them to talk to, talk to my team. Cool. Let's do a few minutes of questions here and then we're gonna start looking at some resumes and see if we can put into play everything we just learned. What about free code camp certs? I don't think they should belong on your on your entry level software engineering resume. You don't want I don't I don't I don't ever have my students put boot camp stuff, basic certification stuff. That all stays off because in those six seconds, I want them to think that I'm a software engineer that's been doing this for a while and I know what the hell I'm doing. So anything that might suss that out and make them feel like they that that that's not true or that you're a newer developer, that that gets a pass for now. What about on LinkedIn? I think this stuff goes on LinkedIn too. What about a cover letter? Like I said, this is not our beginning of the hunt class. We're gonna go in deep on all the stuff you'll need for the hunt. This is just a resume to start getting these ideas percolating. Some of my engineering friends told me that good companies will continue software engineers ones as an investment. Is that a wrong way to view the job from our perspective? No, I think a lot of companies um, the reason why they look for entry-level talent is because they want you to grow in their way. 
every company does all this stuff differently. They have their own systems, their own processes. And so sometimes when you have engineers that have like a year or two of experience, they're already set in a certain way. You can have raw engineering talent, build them up in your way. And that could be a value add. Should our contact info, like our GitHub account be really professional name? Yes. Everything is first name, last name, as much as you can go, unless for some reason you, you can't use your name, but the close to your first name, last name as you can, or a moniker that you use everywhere is really important. So some people just go by a moniker, but that should be consistent across all your stuff. What about soft skills, management, client service? Probably not. You only have six seconds. Ah, great question. Should we stick to a one page rule for resumes? Yes. Um, I think some folks like notice that there's no second page here. I left it blank just so I could say there's nothing on the second page. Yeah, one page or less. You're only spending six seconds. If you can't, if you can't craft a good story that helps somebody understand that you're a good entry level engineer in that one page, you have failed that six second test. Now this is a resume. CVs and things like that are different, but for a resume, try and keep it one page. I know some folks, some people say, oh, it's outdated. Nah, they're, they're not spending that much time on this one page. And it's not, it's not because you don't want to have more stuff on there. It's because folks that have multiple pages means that they haven't put the time or effort in to consolidate and really think through what their bangers are and what they want somebody that's only spending a little bit of time on their resume to walk away with. What if my education is over 20 years old? Just leave the numbers off of it. Yeah, just leave the dates off of it. What about cover pages? We don't, I don't, I don't really ever do cover pages. Sometimes they're like cover letters or cover emails, but, um, we'll talk about that later. Uh, where can we go to do our participating projects? We have project nights instead of class. Sometimes we do project nights. Uh, how, how do you add freelance projects? Do you put a link to the work? Uh, yeah, I think a lot of this stuff can be linked. So if any of this stuff is live and like hosted on say like Netlify, you can turn these into actual links. And a lot of times if you don't have the code live, you'll link to your GitHub. We're gonna have a template that you're gonna use for every single GitHub repo. So that it looks really nice and really professional. And so that's something I'll share with y'all soon. Uh, so every single, every single project you work on is gonna have a really nice GitHub page that's really like knocks people's socks off. And so I'll share that template with you soon. And so a lot of these might be links to your GitHub. Design skills. Yeah, that could definitely go on a resume too. If you're like a designer or something like that, that should go on there. Uh, if we can't call ourselves software engineers, do we put full stack web developer? Yes, I think that's probably the next best step. Any fonts to stay away from? Um, just use standard fonts. Don't get too wild with it. Uh, if you're using the template, just use what the template gives you. Uh, yeah, it should definitely be a PDF. I think PDF, being able to have it in PDF is really important. Don't be sending like a Word doc to folks, send a PDF to folks. Uh, two universities didn't get a degree either. Should I put both? Sure, why not? Um, if I worked for somebody that was a worldwide company, uh, you can just put the port of call for your cruise ship or remote is what people put these days. Should I put my resume online for potential employees? I think it's important to have it hosted somewhere that's easily shareable. Uh, bullet points instead of paragraphs for all work experience. Uh, if you're following my template, you'll notice that there's only one that has like the, it's like the first one has bullet points and then kind of the, the other ones are kind of just smaller because you're trying to save space. So if you, if you need to fill some space, you can do more bullet points. Should you include technical schools such as like welding or CDL if it's part of your story? So a lot of times people say, should I include this or that? Well, you got to think, does it, does it contribute to the story as to why you're a software engineer? So if you're ever, um, if you're ever trying to figure out if something should be on your resume or not as well, Hey, does it contribute to the story I'm presenting to a recruiter or to a hiring partner as to why I am a good software engineer, how I got here? It doesn't make sense. Always think about if it makes sense. If 
if I volunteered for a long time and they offer me a paid position, can I put volunteer and paid? I would probably still list it as volunteer because some people really do. Um, some people really do um, do deeper background checks that will verify your employment history. What if my employment diploma is from a different country than the U.S.? That's totally fine. Should we keep our age off the resume? Uh, where is my age on this resume? There's no age on this resume. Um, the only the only way you can maybe suss out age is like educational timeline. But if you really feel that you might be discriminated against for your age, then you can just leave that time off of there, like your degree time. How about personal interest? Nah, you've only got six seconds. Don't cloud it with stuff that doesn't help you seal the deal. Everything, if you're, if you're ever asking yourself, should this be on there? Should this not be on there? Say, if I only had six to 10 seconds to read this resume, would that stuff help convince me to give you the interview? Most of the time, the answer is no. Definitely always a PDF. Yeah, always a PDF. Uh, I'm currently a truck driver. I feel like it's harder to transition for folks coming from blue collar. That's all cap. My best students, the students that always have the best outcomes, literally, when I, I've tracked this, I looked at the jobs before versus the, the salary after. The folks that make the most money coming out of my programs are always drivers, always drivers. Always, always, always drivers. I don't know what it is, but I, that, I got the proof. Always Uber drivers and CDL holders. Out of everything, out of healthcare, out of folks that have had prior education. I don't know what it is, but drivers, they, they lead the way. And so, yeah, get, get all that silly nonsense out, out of our heads that if we're coming from one industry, it's gonna be that we can't make it, nah. Mm -mm. Data is not with you. And that's why I'm saying you stick to these three. You stick to these three. You stick to these three. You have your 100 devs, you have your consulting, and you have one other thing that you did. You don't need any other history beside those three to land a job. The individuals that use this template, literally, folks that we've talked about in this cohort, like the folks that I've put on here before, folks that, have, that, you, that, you, that you know that have gone through my other programs, they've used this template and now they're at fan companies. But like I said, you can either trust me or not. <laughs> it's up to you. We don't use those emotes anymore. The frog, nah. XQC wrecked our, 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 our place no more. No longer in this chat. I'm, I'm joshing you, but they did cause us a lot of pain. <laughs> Can we ban emotes? <laughs> Alrighty. So we've looked at the example. What I want to do now is knowing what we know, knowing what we know, yeah, it's like, it's engagement. Thank you for the engagement. <laughs> no, so the cool thing, like the, like the, the streamers doing what they did was, was cool because it, it made the stake, like it made it like, it made it fun, right? Like, cause like it made, it made you feel things. <laughs> and so as much as you hated being wiped out, it's like, that's what like brought the community, like your smaller community back together, right? Like having to rebuild and like fight it off. Like that's what made it. That's what made it fun. And so it's all, yeah, it united us. Like, so you gotta, you gotta take the good with the bad, right? And it was good promo. <laughs> Every good story needs a villain. Exactly. All right. So we looked at this, we looked at this resume. I asked some of your questions about it. Remember, this won't be our only time we look at resumes and this will be, I just need these ideas to percolate now. And then we'll have a full two classes on how to do all of our professional stuff um, for the uh, for the for the hunt um, location for all this stuff you can just do remote. Um, some folks put LA, but I think it's better just to put remote if you're putting a hundred devs. 
<laughs> Rockefeller nerd said, I used this template and got my job. My cousin in college used this template and got the job. It does the job. Thank you. <laughs> I love that. Thank you for sharing Rockefeller. What if I'm in LA, then put LA. <laughs> 